Good morning, everybody. It's a Saturday morning, and I have all of that. Can you guys see it in there? I have all of that to take care of. <laughs> But first, before we get going on the apples, let me just give you a quick rundown of what's going on with the family today. Like I said, it's a Saturday. We are getting set to have a Cranberry Harvest crew come on Monday, so that means that Warren is actually out. Starting to get the flood on, pulling pipe, and then hopefully by tomorrow, he'll be all ready to start raking the cranberries. And then hopefully by Sunday afternoon, uh, there's going to be somebody around to help get those boomed up so that they're ready to get loaded into the trucks on Monday. So that's Warren. I'm not sure how these videos are all going to come out as far as in what order, um, but Nick has moved out. It's coming up on, let's see, this must be about day six or something that he has been moved out. Emily is going to be having some engagement photos taken with her fiance. Amber is going horseback riding with some friends today. Sam is on a hike, even though it is a rainy day. He had plans to do a hike with some friends. That leaves me and Joseph and Peter and Maria here to work on apples. Maria is already in the house, chomping at the bit to get going on doing apples. My plan is to get a whole bunch of these apples uh, made into just like apple slices. I soak them in a little salt water. Anyways, I'll show you how that goes. Get these made into just plain old apple slices so that I can put them in the freezer, use them later for like pies or apple crisp, really whatever my heart fancies on that day. A whole, 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 whole bunch of them. That sounded like Christmas or something. Okay, anyways, a whole bunch of them are going to be made into applesauce. And I'm gonna take you guys along on that process as well. Let me just give you another peek at all of these apples. So this is the crop off of three trees that we have growing down by the cranberry marsh. Take a look at these. I wish I knew what variety they are. I know that we have some Cortlands and Macintosh, and those usually look real similar. And then this might be, I just don't know. I want to say maybe a Duchess or something. I'm not sure. I might have to look that up, unless you guys know um, what variety this would be. I better just stop talking and get going. <laughs> We're getting all set up for doing the apple slices right now. Peter's going to put a teaspoon of salt into each of these ice cream pails. Then we'll fill them up with water and that's where we'll put the apples. That just helps them so they don't brown. Okay, now you have to fill those up halfway with water, bud. Where's the salt? It's dissolving. Oh yeah, there's way more. There's less salt. Does it have to be up to the Top yep. of these words. So what I have here is called an apple peeler core slicer and basically, let's see Peter, you demonstrate. Basically, you attach it to a table top or some kind of surface. <laughs> yep, good job. And then you put the apple and you want to get it as centered as you possibly can. And then you crank. And mine I guess is loosening up a little bit, but then you crank it. Go, go. Just wait. Okay, go, 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 go. until it clicks. And so what it does, it takes, oh, you're gonna eat that? It takes the peel off and it cores it hey, and it also slices delicious. it at the same time. And, and then I just cut it into thirds, plop it in my salt water, and once this is all filled up, then we will uh, give it a quick rinse, put them in bags and pop them in the freezer. It really is kind of a juicy mess. We have a towel on the floor here, an, an extra towel, and then you have to pull the core off, and then, whoop, show them how to put it back, squeeze the lever, pull it back, and you start all over with another apple. And as you can see, it kind of makes. A if mess. you have a wormy apple like this one, it doesn't work real well. When you're little, all of this um, apple processing just seems like a ton of fun. So Joe is over here. Keep going. You gotta keep spinning. Keep going. 
Okay, this never works when you go slow. This is like only for Joe. Only for Joe is it gonna work going slow. Right? All right, good job. All right, I've got the first bucket of apples is all done. I just scoop them right out of here, put them in the colander, I'm just kind of letting them drain for a minute, and then I'm going to, uh, I'll measure these out because I like to have um, about six cups in a bag. That seems to be about the right amount to make a pie. Remember when you uh, freeze the apples and then thaw them, they kind of shrink down a little bit. So even though a lot of times it might say like four cups for something, I always put in six cups just because as the apples shrink, you know, you want the pie to be kind of substantial and not just a flat little pie. half of the box done which was one full bowl of apples and now what I really really want to do is just stay on course finish this whole box of apples so I can say that I have one done but I don't think that that's wise right now because it is 11 10 and I think that hello Joe <laughs> hello the best thing to do right now would be to just simply stop where I'm at and start making some lunch. And then I also have a roast that I have thawed, so I'd like to uh, get that into the crock pot so that that's ready for supper too. So I really wanna get these apples done, but when you're doing it basically by yourself, I mean, I do have help. I mean, Peter and Maria and Joseph have all uh, pitched in and helped a little bit, but still, I mean, you guys know what I mean. Slime. <laughs> slime? Yeah. It's oil. No, it's slime. Don't touch it. Slime. about 1 30 in the afternoon here and I finally worked my way through that entire box I did actually have to tell Joseph and Peter that they had to just kind of go and do something else because I just really wanted to get things done in a timely manner and although I love having my kids do everything with me and helping out in the kitchen and everything it was just really starting to get to be taking a little too long. And I really just wanted to have a little moment to get outside. It's been 50 degrees here basically all day. And I'd like to walk down, get the mail, go out, see what Warren's doing on the marsh and just get outside for a little while. And at the speed we were going, we were not gonna get outside until it was dark. So I did have to kind of uh, 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 urge, push, whatever them away so that I could just kind of keep on working through those um, through the apples I got six bags put up into the freezer that box is empty so one down I didn't count my boxes but I think I had somewhere around seven boxes of varying sizes so anyways one down now it's just time to kind of clean everything up I'm gonna dump out my salt water um, we have a bunch of scraps and everything down here. I'm going to get all the rest of the scraps from over there. Just kind of get all of that, take that out to the chickens, and we're going to head outside for a little while. I was thinking I was going to get through at least three boxes, and I did one. So um, I'm not going to get myself down over that because, like Warren said, he's like, you know what? One box. <laughs> Just take it one box at a time, and that's what I have to do because, you know, there's always other things that have to happen, and right now i just much rather get outside. So I'm just going to take a few minutes to clean things up.
made it outside. We're just going to kind of walk off and bike off and run off, whatever. A little bit of energy. Because sometimes everything goes better if you've gotten a chance to get outside, doesn't it, Maria? Yes, indeed. Mom, not about my waterfall. There is a waterfall, isn't it? Looks yeah. like a little water's leaking through the boards, huh? Do you see I that? Fun to put it there. Right. Some I'm water's not. leaking. Da, 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 da. Let's keep da, going. Da, da. Oh yeah, what are those? Horse pins. They are. Horse tracks, huh? <gasps> Horses. They followed this trail. Yeah, you can tell they walk this way, huh? Uh-huh. They followed this trail. Uh, it looks like they... I lost Joe. Where did they end? He went running up there to see what Dad's doing. Where did they end? So there's really no time like the present then to just kind of start um, giving you guys a look at cranberry harvest kind of from the beginning. There's still uh, cranberries on the cranberry vines. He's also pulling the pipe. You see this whole row of pipes there. So what's happening there is that those were all lined up out and hooked together out uh, down the centers of the cranberry bed. That's how we water and that's how he protects for frost as well. And so come fall, he has to pull all those out. So he's starting in on pulling pipe today. And then in the spring, he'll just do the same thing in reverse all the acres put them all back out there it's probably like most work it's pretty cyclical are you taking pictures Joe yeah you look like you were taking pictures uh-huh over the last few weeks we got I, I know one bout of hail we didn't think that we actually got a whole lot of hail though but it looks like it did leave a little bit of uh, a little bit of damage and the problem is you know any kind anytime you have a bruised fruit you know like a bruised apple you know you drop an apple or something gets a bruise that area ends up going bad uh, first hail too early in the year the, the crop can actually end up uh, rotting before even harvest that, that's a bad thing one of the perpetual problems for farmers that grow crops where there's only one growing season uh, per year is that your entire year's income <laughs> rides on that crop. That's always been a big struggle for farmers. You just have one chance. And so a hailstorm or, you know, of course, any natural disaster, um, you know, or bad weather. Take something that little like bad pollinating weather. Bloom happens and you get rain for days and days and days. Naturally, the crop is going to be lower because just bad pollination is going to take place. I say this to you guys not because I want anybody to feel sorry for us or anything like that. Anyways, in our area where farming is big, there are always news stories of farmers committing suicide and then other stories where there's a question if it was a farm accident or maybe a kind of a planned accident. It's just the struggles that come with having to deal with mother nature. Sometimes, no matter what you do, you can do everything right. Do everything by the book, do everything that the consultants and agronomists and everything like that. Do everything right, right? One bout of bad weather. It can really put a damper on, on the crop for that year. So I, I tell you guys that just to help you understand a little bit more the mind the minds of the farmers. All right, we're gonna go get the mail. Come on, guys. Let's go this way. Peter already started. Come on, Joe. Yeah, oh, look at, we're not gonna stay here. We're gonna go for a walk. Look at those gorgeous maple trees over there. Wow. Seriously, you're gonna go there? <laughs> Let's go, princess. You can't wear a crown and then have a grumpy face. That's no good at all. Come on, let's go. Come on, Joe, we're gonna go. No, we stay here. Oh my goodness, nobody wants to go for a walk today. Joe's a great kid, but it's not always sunshine and rainbows, that's for sure. He is ticked at me right now for making him go for this walk, which of course is crazy because when we're in the house, what does he do? He's always, always trying to take off. Oh, yeah, awesome. Pores and gills. Yeah, look at that. Peter says that one has pores. And that one has gills. Nice identification. Oh, it is so, so beautiful. I love all the fall colors. Look at the maples. Oh, and it's super dark pores. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, super dark pores. 
At this rate, it's gonna be a while before we get to the mailbox. We gotta stop looking at mushrooms, don't we? Mm -hmm. But these would be very good sticks. Ooh, yep, pick a stick. Is that your walking stick? No, these would be very good sticks. For what? For the fire. Oh, uh-huh. For having fires. Ooh, went down in a dip. Did we get anything fun? Whoa, Peter. Okay, let's get it picked up carefully before anything blows away. That's pretty. This is so Joe. First he didn't want to go on the walk. Now I can't get him to come back home. Come on, buddy, let's go. We are back in from our walk. I was able to get Joe back in, and what I was hoping would happen is that I would kind of tire them out a little bit and they'd want to watch. That's perfect. I just set the timer for 15 minutes, and I said, if you guys want to watch your movie, get it all cleaned up, and that's what they did. I've got this roast that I need to get going, which actually, it's 20 to four. Who am I kidding? I am not gonna get that going for tonight's supper. Um, so I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do right this moment. I have a million things swimming around in my head that I could do, so we'll just have to see what, what kind of transpires here. I changed my mind again. I did decide to do to do the beef roast. Instead of doing it in my crock pot though, I thought I would just, I just threw the two roasts right into a big roasting pan. I am just mixing up here a can of cream of mushroom soup and I have a packet of um, onion soup mix. I'm going to pour this over top of my roast and I'm going to fill this up with water. Well, I'll put it in before we leave for church and then by the time we get home from church and everything it should be all good to go. I'm going to get it from a monster truck show and, there, and it came in a little heart bag and a bracelet came with it. Well, we're home from church. So I just put the meat thermometer in. The meat is plenty done. I had it going while we were at church in the oven. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing to do, but I do it all the time. I've got some green beans going, and we're just going to have some dish up some roast and beans and bread and butter, and that's going to be supper here at basically 8 o'clock. So I'm going to say good night to all of you. I was hoping to get to doing applesauce today. I got one box of apples done, so I'm going to count that as a win. Maria is up here. You say good night. Good night. See y'all later.